Hey, it's Mr. Lineski. This is our last video for Unit 6. Oh my gosh, we just started. Um, yeah, Unit 6, we're done now. Um, section 2 is about Hinge Theorem and the Triangle Inequality, so let's take a look at what all this is about. Um, triangle Inequality is basically saying that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So oftentimes questions will come up asking you, does the triangle exist? Um, and so if I sort of just draw a triangle here, and let's just call it triangle ABC, one of my favorites, um, as long as length AB plus BC is greater than AC, and all of these conditions here are met, we can say that the triangle exists. So if I just made up sides here and said 3, 4, and 5, um, and I want to know, can these sides actually create a triangle? Like if I had pieces of fence and I put those pieces together, would I be able to lock this triangle up and, and make it work? Um, and so if I look at side AB here, I would say that's 4, BC is 3, and is that greater than 5? Well, that's 7. 7 is greater than 5, yes. Um, BC is 3. Um, AC is 5. Is that greater than 4? 8 is greater than 4. Yes, that works. Um, AB is 4. AC is 5. BC is 3. Is 9 greater than 3? Why, yes it is. Since all three of those conditions have been met, the triangle does in fact exist. Um, it says, for what values of x is the triangle possible? So this is kind of saying, given two sides, what are my possibilities? What range of values is sort of my possibility um, for the third side? And we want to write our answer as an inequality. So when you get to a problem like this where they're asking you for the third side, it's a very simple process where you just add the numbers and then subtract the numbers. And all that's going to do is give you um, your range of values. So 10 plus 12 gives me 22, and when I subtract them, 12 minus 10, it gives me 2. So that means that my values have to be between 2 and 22. Now one thing that I wanted to point out to you back here that I didn't get to is if you notice that it has to be greater than that third side. And I wanted to show you this little simulation here. Um, where we can actually kind of mess around with the points to say like look they're never gonna meet up um, so the sides that I have here um, are a side length of 13 3 and 7 and if I take my two smallest sides 3 plus 7 that equals 10 that's not greater than 13 and as you can see here these points are never gonna meet up to create a triangle so let's look at, well, what if we made this 10? What if it was equal? So 3 and 7. And well, if you notice, I still, they're not going to meet up, and they get really, really close. And right there, you might be thinking, oh, it looks like they are, they're touching. But realistically, they're not. And I don't know if I can, whoops, wrong way, if I can get it to show you. But you can kind of zoom in on this. And the closer and closer I get, the, the, you actually see that they still don't touch. Um, and so what ends up happening is the points just sort of overlay on top of each other like this. So the triangle does not exist. So um, again, they have to equal, or they have to be greater than the third side. So if I made um, this 9, now I could say that these things... Uh, create a triangle somehow. Ah. It's not letting me move F. All right. <laughs> there we go. Ta da! Okay. So now we have 3 plus 7. That's greater than 9. The world makes sense. Okay. So that's triangle inequality. Um, Something else relating to triangle inequality are lengths of sides and angles. So what we're told is that the longest side and the longest angle of any triangle are always opposite of each other. Similarly, the shortest side and the smallest angle are always going to be opposite of each other as well. 
So something that you may see is a problem like this where I give you the sides of a triangle and I'll ask you put the angles in order from smallest to largest. So typically what I like to do here is just label your sides small, medium, large. And so now if this is the smallest side, 10, that means that the angle that is opposite side 10, opposite meaning the one you can sort of draw the line to, right here, that angle A would be the smallest angle. Now it doesn't mean that angle A equals 10. I want to clarify that. Just because this is 10 doesn't mean that this is 10. Um, it just means that if this is the smallest side, that this is the smallest angle. So then the next smallest uh, angle, or the medium angle, would be angle C, because these are across from each other. And then the largest angle would be this one here, angle B. So I want to throw a little story out at you to kind of help you with this next problem. Pretend that we are at two different coffee shops, that each of these triangles represents two different coffee shops, coffee shop A, coffee shop B, and they sort of share their wall here. Um, but our wall in this case are going to be the number of ounces that are in a coffee cup. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to fill in the missing angles because we're now what we're trying to figure out is the sides, putting the sides in order from smallest to largest. Um, so if I look at my angles here, we have 80 and 40 and to find the third side we subtract from 180. That tells us this is 60. Over here we have 70 and 75. When we subtract that from 180 we get that this is 35. So right now what we're going to do, and you can do this in any order, but I'm going to pretend like coffee shop B does not exist right now. So pretend that that's not there. And right now if I was looking at coffee shop A and I asked you label the sides from smallest to largest, what we would do is we would look at, well, 40 is my smallest angle, therefore this is the smallest side, this is the next angle, so this would be medium, and then this is uh, the largest angle, therefore this is the largest side. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make up some numbers here. These numbers are completely made up, I'm not pulling them from anywhere, I want to sort of preface that for you, that I'm saying small, medium, large, and let's pretend that that represents coffee, how, much, how many ounces are in a coffee cup. So let's say that the small is 10 ounces. Let's say that the medium is 15 ounces. And then let's say that the large is 20 ounces. So that's coffee shop A, small, medium, large. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore coffee shop A, so pretend like A doesn't exist, and now we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did with coffee shop B. We're going to go through and we're going to label the sides small, medium, large. So based on these angles, this is the smallest angle, that means that this is the smallest side. If this is the next one, that means this is a medium side. And then if this is 75, that means that this is the large. So now I have small, medium, large for coffee shop B. But if you notice, we have our reflexive property. They're sharing this side, or they're sharing that ounce of coffee. So coffee shop A's large is 20 ounces, and coffee shop B's small is 20 ounces because it's the same line. So if this is 20, this has to be 20. So notice that this is its largest side and this is its smallest side. So that means that the medium and the large have to be bigger than whatever that side is. So if this is 20, we can just make up numbers again and let's say that the medium is 25 and let's say that the large is 30. So now when I ask you put these sides or put these coffee cup uh, sizes in order from smallest to largest, we sort of have five coffee cup sizes. We have the 10 ounce, the 15 ounce, the 20 ounce, the 25 ounce, and the 30 ounce. So going around here, the smallest side would be side AD. The next smallest side would be our medium, AB. And then our next one would be BD. And then the next one would be BC. And then finally we would have CD. 
So one thing I want to point out again is that the side where it was the large and the small, this will always be your middle piece. So notice that we technically have six sides to two different triangles, but when they share the side, that just becomes the fifth and or the third and the fourth technically. Um, so they're sharing this piece right here. So that one's a little bit of a challenge problem. All right, and the last thing we are going to talk about is the hinge theorem. Um, the hinge theorem basically says if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, um, then the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second. Whoo, what does all that mean, Mr. Lineski? Well, if we take a look at these two sides here, this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, but this angle is smaller than this angle. So we can say one of two things. We can say that this side, side AB, we don't know the measure of it, but we can say that it's going to be less than the side of the angle DE because if the angle is smaller, the side is smaller. So I have another little sort of uh, simulation thing to show you here. Um, so in this problem we have um, two sides that are congruent, EF and BC, and then we also have AB congruent to DE. And I want you to focus on angle B and angle E and what happens. So right now angle E is 82.92 degrees and this is 68 degrees. So if this angle is bigger, what do you notice about side FD? It's bigger than side AC. And if I kind of mess around with that angle, let's go less than 80, uh, or I'm sorry, 68. So let's go to 57. So now AC is bigger than FD. So if this angle's bigger, this side's bigger. Smaller, smaller. And then if we get them to be closely uh, to the same, I don't think we can get that on this program. Um, but that's kind of what's going on, that as this angle gets smaller, so does its corresponding side or opposite side. And as this angle gets bigger, the side gets bigger. They call it hinge theorem because if you think about the hinges on a door, just sort of opening and closing. Um, okay, so the rest of this worksheet are just some practice problems for you to try out triangle inequality, does the triangle exist, and then making some comparisons using the hinge theorem. Thank you for watching.